Hello and welcome to another sound synthesis tutorial. This sound synthesis tutorial is about envelopes. And the winner is... Oh no, ah! I don't know what I've just done. The winner is the P5JS sound library. Okay, no, 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 no about that. Okay, what I'm really here to talk about is this kind of envelope. And this looks like kind of a very scary, weird looking diagram, but I'm actually hopefully gonna make it make sense to you in this video. And I've lost my marker, here's the marker. Um, what I want to talk about is something called an ADSR envelope. And envelopes are used in the world of sort of sound synthesis as a mechanism for adjusting the way uh, the playback engine enters and exits the sound. And the, uh, so you could essentially configure, you know, in the previous video I made this oscillator object that played a sine wave. And the idea, I'm going to wrap that sine wave in an envelope, <laughs> open up the envelope and put the sine wave in it. And that envelope is going to configure how that sound. And, and you can get very sophisticated with this to make sounds that sound more like one or another, different kinds of musical instruments. But really for us in this video, I just want it to sound kind of like an electric keyboard in a way. You're, electric? Is it really electric? I don't know if that's what you say. But you press a key and you hear the sound go bum, bum, sort of attacks, fades in, and fades out. So uh, in P5JS, there is an object called a P5 envelope. We had a P5 oscillator. Now I'm going to add a P5 envelope. We're going to link them together. And the reason why it's called an ADSR envelope is because there are four stages. Now I have that diagram here, but I think in order to understand it, it would help to, for me to try to like draw that diagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is uh, A, which stands for attack. There is D, which stands for decay. And there is S, which stands for sustain. And then there is R, which stands for release. Okay, now the interesting thing about this is there are two kinds of things that are involved in an envelope. There's stuff that's measured in time, and there's stuff that's measured in amplitude. So, uh, and interestingly enough, attack, decay, and release are all amounts of time. So attack meaning, the moment you press the key on that like piano or keyboard or whatever, that's attacking the note. So how long does it take in time to get up to what, is, what would be uh, thought of as the attack amplitude or volume, the level, okay? So attack is how long does it take to get up to that. Decay is how long does it take to get down to its regular volume. So there's a volume like it could be loud at the beginning and then sustain at a different volume. So that's how long it takes to decay. And then sustain. So this is time. Decay is time. Sustain is actually uh, amplitude, a volume. So this is how loud is that sustain level. So this is a, a value measured between 0 and 1, kind of percentage uh, volume. Um, and then release is also a time to for how long it should take to get to, to fade out to its release amplitude. <laughs> so we have, what's interesting here is we have the attack time, the decay time, the sustain volume, and then the release time. Interestingly enough though, we need an attack volume and a, and a release volume. The attack, so let's say the sustain volume is 0.5, but when we attack it, we want it actually to ramp up to 0.75, then fade down to 0.5, and then fade down to zero. So there are two values missing from ADSR which is the attack volume and the release volume. And in P5, when you create the envelope, when you say new P5, actually you just say um, P5 envelope, sorry, there are two functions. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, I think one is called set A D S R, and you give it four arguments, which are these values, attack time, decay time, sustain level, release time. And then there's another function, which is like set, uh, I'm gonna come over here and quickly look it up in the reference. Uh, set range, okay. <laughs> uh, then the other function is set range, and boy, this pen is not working very well. I don't know if you can read this. And those are those last two volumes, this attack level and the release level. So we need to configure this envelope. So let's go into P5.js and now make that envelope and configure it. <laughs> Coming over here. Hello. Okay, so you can see, by the way, now we might understand this graph, this, this chart a little bit more. Attack time, then decay time. What's that sustain level, and what's the release time? Okay, um, now, so let me go back to my code. This is the, by the way, so this is where I, I kind of have an example built off of the one from my previous video, where all it does is play an oscillator. Do you hear that? I think it's playing the musical note A, 440 hertz and then I can turn it off with this button. So what I want to do is instead of just having it be just the pure oscillator that just plays forever, I want to create, and I'm going to just make a variable called env for 
Envelope. <laughs> I just, I really just want to use props. Envelope is kind of a lame prop, but it is a prop nonetheless. Then I'm going to say here, uh, I'm going to say envelope equals new p5 dot envelope. And I'm going to say envelope dot, what did I say? Set ADSR. So now I need those four volumes, vo vo values. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Attack, decay, sustain, release. OK, so <laughs> attack is, uh, let's just say we're going to have a 0.5 seconds for the attack. Then we're going to have 0.25 seconds for the decay. Then our sustain volume is going to be at 0 0.5. And then uh, the release time is going to be 0 0.1. So I'm kind of making these up, the arbitrary configuration. Then I'm going to say set, what did I say, set range. So I want the attack volume to maybe be at 0.8, so a bit louder. And then I want that release volume to be down at 0, because I want it to fade all the way out. So now I have, if we look at this code, I have the envelope and I have the waveform. So I need a mechanism by which we, I connect the envelope and the waveform together. I want that, you know, <laughs> this is the waveform, this is the envelope. I want to take the waveform and I want to put it in the envelope. Oh, that, that really made sense <laughs> over here. Okay, so the way that that's done is with the amplitude function. So typically with a waveform, I would set the amplitude to like 0 or 0.5 or 1. But actually what I want to do here is set the amplitude to that particular envelope. So now they, this is how they are connected. The wave's amplitude is set to the envelope. And then in this play function, I actually don't need all this toggle stuff because all I want to do is just say envelope.play. So I want the envelope to play. It's going to play that oscillator wrapped in all the configurations of the envelope. So let's see. Hopefully this is going to work. I'm going to refresh it. Oh, P5 envelope is not a constructor. New P5 dot envelope. What did I get wrong there? So let's have a look at this page. Um, new P5 dot ENV. So it's not the full word envelope. It's just dot ENV. OK, thank you very much. Dot ENV for short. Then I'm going to go back to my program. Going to run it. Do you hear that? Now, does that really sound like? playing a note at a keyboard. I don't know if it does. Let's mess around with it. Let's make that attack time uh, very, very, very short. Let's make the decay time also uh, shorter. And um, yeah, so let's make the attack volume like a little bit louder so we can sort of hear. And maybe the release time can be much longer. Do you hear that? So there's like sort of a loud pop and then a little bit of sustain and then a fade out. So, you know, now hopefully this explains the idea. Now you can, to your heart's content, I might suggest make a sketch, tie all these to like buttons or text boxes or sliders, configure the envelope, uh, have it play, uh, uh, change the frequency each time you play a note, have some slider to set the frequency. You can sort of set something up to test how this works and to kind of get good at, and I'm sure if you research like standard A, D, S, R values for particular instruments. You might uh, and try it with a triangle wave instead of a sine wave. You're going to be able to maybe control how the sound sounds a bit more. Now, I should mention, by the way, you know, I'm doing the sort of basics of generating tones with P5JS sound library. There's another library you might look into at some point called tone.js, um, which also has a lot, of, uh, a lot of features for doing this kind of work and pushing it further. But what I want to do after, uh, in the next video, is show you now how to keep track of a, an array, a list of different musical notes, how to set an envelope and have an oscillator and play a melody and possibly you know, also a harmony at the same time. So now we've got the basic idea, but how do I turn this into something that actually will manage time, play notes or be interactive that the user could press keys on the keyboard and play certain notes, that type of thing. And I'll do that in the next uh, video tutorial, which I will get to at some point, perhaps. If you're watching this at some point in the future, it's already there. OK, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay. Oops, I'm back again with another addendum. Uh, one thing that I never actually talked about was uh, how long should this uh, note sustain itself? And you notice that's not really actually a variable anywhere in this. Uh, there's, no, there's no sustain time. There, um, so the reason that isn't is because typically the way these envelopes are implemented is w if you're thinking about playing a piano or a keyboard, sus the note is sustained as long as you're holding down that key. Um, so uh, 
in a, some default amount of time, I guess, is being used, but there is also the functions trigger attack and trigger release. So you can trigger the attack, instead of just calling play, you can actually trigger the attack for that envelope and have it sustain for an arbitrary amount of time until you trigger release. And that allows you to do a few more things uh, with how you control the envelope and the playback. And I'll, I'll try to do an example in a later video which uses trigger attack and trigger release. Okay, thanks for that little extra note. Or watching that extra note, that is. <laughs> Thank me for the extra note? I don't know. <laughs>